the NFL on EA Sports. And if it's in the game, it's in the game. It's the Jacksonville Jaguars and the Buffalo Bills. And it's coming up next. Autumn has come to upstate New York. Fall colors abound, and we welcome you inside Highmark Stadium here in Orchard Park. Today, we've got a fun little clash in the AFC, as it'll be the Jacksonville Jaguars taking on the Buffalo Bills. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. Uh, Charles, here in Buffalo, they love their Bills, and for good reason. They're guys, without question, one of the favorites to lift the Lombardi Trophy in Vegas come February. And you mentioned with good reason, because we know their quarterback is one of the best players in the league, but this is an overall team built to win, especially when we get into the playoffs. Offense, defense, coaching staff, they've been knocking on the door for a while. They want to find their way through and get to the Super Bowl. Well, meanwhile, for the Jaguars, the rebuild under Doug Peterson is right on track. And listen, nobody's going to get wildly excited about 9-8, and eight, which they were last year. I get that. But when that comes on the heels of 3-14 and 14 and 1-15, and 15, certainly a step in the right direction. And the biggest stride they could make this year is on defense, 28 against the pass last year. And just moving into the middle of the pack, that could buy them a couple more wins and put them in a great spot come playoff time. Seems like we were just starting training camp, but here we are in October, and off we go on EA Sports. And out a little across the 25 to the 27. Well, the Jaguars ready to go on offense for the first time, and they're led by the former number one pick in the draft in his third season now, Charles, Trevor Lawrence. Last year, we got the Trevor Lawrence and so many tapped to be the savior of the Jaguars. He broke 4,000 yards for the first time and threw 25 touchdown passes and guided his team to the playoffs. This young man, he's been good since the first time he picked up a ball in youth league. They expect nothing less from him again this season. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. Second and seven. Now Lawrence. Looking middle and it's incomplete. As a corner, you have to be able to run with guys step for step down field of man coverage and make up ground quickly in zone. You have to put yourself in position to make plays just like that one we saw there. A tough spot here on their opening drive. This is third and seven. From the shotgun, Lawrence. That is caught. And he'll be tackled right on the chalk of the 45. That one a pickup of 15 for Jacksonville. That's a play that may get lost in the grand scheme of things, but one thing's for sure. You certainly don't want to go three and out to start the game. So that's a nice job of finding the right play call and coming up with a first down. First and ten, it's Lawrence. A uh, quick throw there is incomplete. That was well defended. They clamped down on every available receiver. Just got to give the win to the defense on that snap. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. ETN up the middle. Now he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. It'll go as a loss of a yard, so now they deal with third and 11. Sometimes it's a danger putting that jumbo set out there. You just get a lot of bodies massed in one location. You could wind up with 18, 20, maybe even all 22 in the box, and there's nowhere to run the football. On third down, Lawrence. The Bills get to it. Leonard Floyd, the old Georgia Bulldog, fighting his way into the backfield. Third and long, you knew that he was going to throw. 
throw it. He just couldn't find anybody to throw it to. Yeah, and it shouldn't have been a surprise, but that was perfect execution of their nickel defense. That fifth defensive back, the extra defender, he really tightened up things downfield in coverage, and they were able to get to him in the pocket. So on fourth down, here's Logan Cook to punt for Jacksonville. Deontay Hardy back deep. And the kick's away as he angles this one for the sideline. No returning this one. It sails out of bounds, and they'll spot it right at the 20. Well, here come the Bills for their first possession, led out by their 27-year-old quarterback in year six. It's Josh Allen. And it just feels like Allen has the Bills on the cusp of something great. Another 13-win season last year, and they're officially perennial favorites in the AFC. Behind that effort, continued excellence from one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. Now a man in for an expanded role in 2023. It's James Cook. And hold on here, because on that last run, it looks like we have a player who was shaken up. We'll check on his status when we return to Orchard Park. Here's a second and five now from the 25. To the air, Allen. A quick throw going to be caught by Diggs. And Diggs will have a Bills first down as the tackle made up around the 33-yard line. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Allen off the play fake. And he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. Multiple players combined for their team's first sack of the game. Chalk that one up to bad acting, I guess, because they certainly failed to sell the handoff, and the pressure state keyed in on the quarterback. No Oscar awards for this offense, just a loss of yardage. Allen. Slips up past the 45 before being tackled. Josh Allen, very athletic at 6'5", showing the versatility, picking up the first on the scramble. Off play action, Allen. He's got this one complete to Sherfield. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. The result, only four yards there on the play. And it's second down. Now Cook, he's got it off the draw. And he is close to a first down as he's tackled at the Jaguars' 44. It's a five-yard gain, but they'll still be a yard short here with third down now looming. Now Allen off the bootleg. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Jaguars' 18. Forget the run on third and one. They shot the D and rip off a pretty big play. Normally on third down and short yardage, you're thinking of throwing to your tight end. It's just going to be a simple chain mover. But this time they let him roam down the field, and a nice dart picks up the first down and then some. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. They'll try the middle with Cook. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. All around great play by Devin Lloyd, using his athleticism to get to the backfield and his strength to stop him for a loss. That was a terrific play, causing a loss. As a middle linebacker, simple. You can either fill holes or you can attack them, as he did there. On second down, Cook. Sharp move, but can't find much space. Drop just inside the 20. 
Three yards on the pickup there, but they've only got it back to third and ten. So the shotgun snap to Allen. Under pressure, and he'll go down. Back at the 26-yard line. Brought down by Trayvon Walker on the pass rush. But it's about how teams are so competitively matched, and you just want to make those plays that give you an advantage. How about right here? The difference between letting them score a touchdown versus holding them to a field goal? That's absolutely huge with the play he just made. And you know he hated taking the loss there on third down. So on fourth down, off goes Allen. On comes Tyler Bass for the Buffalo field goal. This a 43-yard attempt. The kick by Bass is good. And the Bills will take a 3-0 lead. So an opening drive field goal maybe doesn't whip this crowd into a frenzy, but I think that they will take the early lead. There's no doubt about it. They will always take the early lead. And maybe that celebration comes later if they play well and they can bring things open. But right now, this is all about letting the offense just get settled in. So after knocking through the field goal, here's Bass to kick it away. And no return here for Agnew, so they'll bring it out, start to drive at the 25. So time to see Jacksonville again on offense for the second time here in this game. The defense got the better of them last series, forcing a punt. See if they make a few changes in the game plan here and try to get points out of this drive. First and 10. They'll throw this out wide and complete it to Ridley. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight. Second and two. That's probably as simple of a throw as he'll have all game. And good for everyone. Good for his completion percentage. Good for the receptions for the receivers. But you know how they work on that. They have footballs with no laces. So that as soon as you get the snap, you're just throwing the football. All right? You're not trying to find the laces and grip it a certain way. That takes time. Just get the ball and throw it. So that's how they practice it all the time now, too. And this one into the hands of Ingram downfield. And they'll get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. Getting it to him in space pays off big time. That winds up going for 31. That is the exact right play call against that defense. So a hat tip to the offensive play caller because he won that part of the chess match. But give credit to his players as well. They won the execution part of it. So how about that for a chain mover? They're all the way down inside the 40 now for first and 10. Here's Lawrence. And he will find Ridley on the left side. And he'll be brought down on the 30-yard line after a gain of six. A six-yard pickup brings up second and four at the 30-yard line. And the ball on the 30. Here's second and four. Throwing again here. It's Lawrence. Open man. This is Brenton Strange, the tight end. His first catch, good for eight and a first down. Out of the gun, it's Lawrence. And that's going to be too high. Out of bounds and incomplete. And now a common sight, at least on this drive. A momentary setback, though, for this passing game that has been moving well this series. Good thing for them, though. Still two more downs to connect and try to pick up another first down. Second and ten. Now Lawrence to throw. Got his man. It's caught. Touchdown, Jaguars. Calvin Ridley from 21 yards away. And the Jaguars have answered that early field goal to take a first quarter lead.
Oh, such great concentration there, going right up against the side of the end zone, but able to get the feet in bounds. There are so many things that go into that catch, and you just mentioned the concentration, being able to catch the football, get your feet down in bounds, hang on to it all the way through the process of the catch. That was a phenomenal play. Extra point from McManus is good, and that makes it a 7-3 lead. So the drive there took six plays, and it's Calvin Ridley who finishes it off with a touchdown reception. After the touchdown, here's McManus now to kick it away. This fielded right at the goal line. And he won't quite make it to the 25. So here come the Bills out for their second drive. And they had a long drive last time, but they had to settle for a field goal. And I'm sure that's how it felt to them, settling. They probably should have gotten in the end zone. Yeah, not out and out joy, right? Because that's what you get when you put the ball in the end zone. Laying out is Davis, and he's got the football. Successful start to the drive, 17 yards, and moves the sticks. Every guy that plays this game has plenty of people around him that are concerned for his health and well-being. He had no regard for his body on that catch at all, did he? <laughs> Middle of the field, diving to grab it? No, he didn't. a gain of six and it'll be second down if you're these receivers you gotta be ready because when he's gonna throw it quick on that rpo he's gonna throw it quick and this is why you spend time with your guy either in the off season during the week the whole bundle because sometimes it's just telepathy you both see the same thing and he knows get the ball to him right away on second down here's allen quick hitter here it's complete second catch for him today and it'll wind up the first down Now it's Allen. Now a quick throw there, but it's going to be incomplete. Stephon Diggs, his intended receiver. And now it's second down. Working out of the shotgun. Here's Allen. And he fends him off. And he's got this down to the 35. Give him 10 that time, escaping the danger, running with it, and picking up a first down. Now some movement before the snap. And we'll hear from our referee for the first time this afternoon. That flag accepted, and it backs the offense up a little bit. A false start backs him up five, first and 15. Throwing now is Allen. And that one drops down, incomplete. Good coverage there, forced the ball free, and it's second down. It's another zone defense. It looks like it's open for possibilities, but they did a nice job patrolling the middle of the field and forcing an incompletion. So they'll come up after the incompletion for second down. To throw, it's Allen. And a quick throw here. That's complete. And he's going to be out of bounds down around the 35-yard line. Here comes the eighth play of the drive, and they need a full 10 yards on third down. From the gun, it's Allen. And that one goes incomplete on the drive. That's what he definitely normally catches. 
pitches. Fourth down. I wonder, Brandon, I just wonder, you think maybe he was worried about where he was on the field? Was he far enough? Was he close enough to the first down sticks? Absolutely. He was right there by him, and I think he was thinking first down before he caught that football. Yeah, got to catch it first, because if you don't catch it, there's no chance of picking up a first down. The kick by Bass is good, and they'll get it back within a point at 7-6. So after knocking through the field goal, here's Bass to kick it away. Now Jamal Agnew from his end zone. And this return will net positive as he gets past the 25 and up to the 27-yard line. The Jags offense now gets set and heads back onto the field. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember, the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out. Looking to repeat that in Charles's defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive, and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. Second down and a little more than a yard here. ETN once more. And he'll be taken down as that will take us to the end of the first quarter to play. After one, a one-point game, seven to six. The Jags with the football to begin the second quarter. So here's a first and 10 at the 38 as they've got it as we resume action. Motion man left is Kirk. Now fake on the jet sweep and they'll instead run up the middle. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Well, that's just a pile of bodies there, and that's when you kind of find out who's a tough guy, right? Who can stand up and make a play? It was only a three-yard run. But for both sides, they had to walk away from that field like, okay, I can stand up when the going gets tough in here. On second down, here's Lawrence. A short throw to Ingram. A gain of three last play. This time they double it and pick up six. the gun it's Lawrence looking for Jones and it's intercepted picked off by Jordan Poyer and the Bills are going to take over a couple of yards shy of midfield you're looking there at a defensive back who's maybe a step slower than he was when he came into the league a decade ago I know I question his speed coming into the game but what he's lost in speed he's more than made up for it with intellect and that's a great job of knowing how to position himself to make that interception now the Bills offense gets ready to head back onto the field. They start near midfield following the interception as they begin first and 10. They start the drive with Cook. And he is met at the line of scrimmage and he goes down right there. Officially no gain on the play and it's second down. The running lanes have definitely not been there for him here in the first half and I don't think it's all been his fault. His offensive line hasn't given him much space a loss results there. Allen looks to throw on second down. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. Good coverage downfield led to him taking off, picking up the first down on a 13-yard run. Here's Allen. Got a man, and he hits him in stride. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. 
Nothing flashy there. The slant to the slot. Oh, and the frustration for the defensive guys because it's a quick play. And you know it's going to be a bang-bang play in terms of the throw and the catch. And then he's able to absorb the contact and complete it. Just need a yard here. Second and one. Here's Allen to throw it. And this is caught for a Bills touchdown. Trent Shurfield, 30 yards. And the Bills are once again back in front. The fly route works for the TD ground. And you know what the receivers love to say? If we get even with the defender, we're leaving. And that's exactly what he did all the way into the end zone. And then he was on the business end catching it once he got over the stripe. And Tyler Bass on for the extra point attempt. And he puts this one through as the lead moves to 13-7. So that drive of four plays. And it culminates in a Bills touchdown. to the touchdown Bass to kick it away from his end zone here comes Agnew it gets by him and now a little daylight and they're going to have terrific field position as they finally get to him but just shy of the midfield stripe at some point we're going to get it through our heads special teams special teams special teams the spark that often wins games and now out come the Jags. And we'll see if they can bounce back from that last drive in particular, if they can bounce back at the quarterback position, Charles, after throwing their first interception of the ball game. Yeah, and some guys, you know they're going to want to try and get a big play right away and take control of that. Others, they're going to look to hit a couple shorter passes, get a little more momentum back that way. But for the defense, that goal is not changing a bit. They want another pick. You're exactly right about that. In fact, you've got to watch them a little bit because in coverage, they may cut down their gaps a little bit, maybe their splits a little bit in order to try and get to the ball even faster. On second down, a run with ETN. And just one yard here from the 49 to the 50. Pretty good little two-play sequence there. You foresee incompletion, then a very short pickup. Yeah, now maybe you bring in an extra defensive back or two because you want to try and defend on third down. They like to play those nickel or sub packages, don't they? The offense on third down, just one for three thus far. This is third and nine. From midfield now, Lawrence. He's got his target. That's complete. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. It's a gain of 26 as they pick up the first down of the process. He's such a good route runner. Shows it there on third down. Very proficient and a good pass. And you know what I've observed over the years in the NFL? The better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's going to have in you to go to you in important times because he can trust you being in the right spot and they connected there and picked up a first down. He'll find Jones again, complete. And they will eventually get him down, but he's inside the five all the way to the three. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. You have to ask the question, where was the hell? Because it's a little surprising to me that he'd find that much room to run this close to the end zone. He doesn't quite get there, but he sets his guys up with a first and goal. ETN will struggle to get to the line of scrimmage as he'll be tackled back at the four-yard line. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. Collectively great defense. It takes all 11, especially down here toward the goal line. The call comes in, and the call essentially says all 11 have to make a play here. You have to show toughness. We just saw it there. Once more, ETN, and he's going to lose yardage again as he is stuck behind the line. That second down play nets a minus four. We all know how much running backs love getting the ball down near the goal line. They think they're going to find a way into the end zone. He hasn't had that kind of luck so far. Ends up not getting in on the last two carries. You know he's going to be upset about a missed opportunity. 
On third and goal, Lawrence caught on the slam. They wind up with six on the hook up there, but it's not enough. Fourth and goal. So much about offense is what you call hidden yardage. You know, you, you throw the ball to someone, they catch it, and then they can make a big play. You know, they create a play, run after catch. They did a really nice job there of limiting that and keeping them from a first down. They have stopped him in his tracks. They run for it with Bigsby. And not only will he not get in, he's going to lose yardage. They stuff him back at the four. And hold on here, because on that last run, it looks like we have a player who was shaken up. We'll check on his status when we return to Orchard Park. Bills come to the line to start their next drive. And now their defense came through with the goal line stand, got them the ball back. See what they can do about putting a drive together. Long way to go. They need to reward that defense. Goal line stand, they've got to make that stand up themselves, right? Give the defense a chance to catch their breath on the sidelines. At least get two first downs. Three would be better. Change field position. Let them catch their breath. Here's a second and five. They'll bring a receiver in motion left. Back to the ground. This time, Cook. And he's going to be taken down shy of the 10 right around the 9-yard line. They follow up the gain of 5 by only getting 1 there on 2nd down. Here is 3rd down and 4. Allen going to throw. Setting up the screen for Cook. And he is going to have the Bills first down. He needed five. He got it barely as it will officially go down as a gain of five yards. That's just what you call a chain mover right there. Nothing fancy. Get the ball out to the back, and you're asking him to make a little bit extra out of maybe what is nothing. And he does exactly that. Picks up the first down. I can't wait till we get to the point, partner, where we're not saying chain mover, but we're saying laser pointer picks it up for the first down. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Well, sometimes you just have to give credit to the defense. Great job there at the point of attack, holding up. They won their battles at the line of scrimmage, left him no space to try and run. A really nice job swarming to the ball carrier. On play action, Allen. It's caught by Davis and brought down, but not before reaching the 25. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up the first down. Now Allen. And this is caught for the grab. Takes it across the 40-yard line. Another big hitter there. This one good for 18. And this is why trying to cover the angle route is so difficult. Anyone playing the linebacker position, when they see a running back out of the backfield widen because he heads towards the flat first, oftentimes you widen too much and overcommit. He cuts up inside, and that's what we saw there. A nice pickup for a first down. First down, Allen. It's complete to Diggs. Short completion, just four yards, and it's second down. Up the middle, it's Cook. And he'll be brought down right on the 50. A gain of three. That's a gain of three. Brings up third and three. Here comes play number nine now as they come up on a third and three. Two minutes remaining in this first half of football. 
They'll come up now, third and three. From midfield, here's Allen. Oh, that's into a sea of bodies, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Tyson Campbell. And the Jaguars are going to have the football here at their own 35-yard line. And, Brandon, this is a real nice job defensively of getting inside a quarterback's head and figuring out, okay, where is he going with the football? Because you can make an educated guess defensively, not all the time, but sometimes. And when you're right, you've got a decent chance of coming away with the football. The Jaguars' offense now heads back onto the field. Well, they've got some stuff to build on from that last drive because they moved the football CD and then they tried to go for it on fourth down, didn't convert, probably left a bitter taste in their mouths. I would say so. I think that they go out in this series determined. Touchdown, Jaguars! Evan Ingram, 65 yards. And the Jaguars strike quickly here to tie up the ball game. Charles, that was a heck of a play. It truly was because when he made that catch, he had to shake through some people, right? So that play, to me, a highlight film that should be accompanied by bass music, right? <laughs> I mean, boom, 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 and he finds his way to the end zone. Terrific play. McManus's point after is good, and with it, his guys take the lead here by a point. to the touchdown. Here's McManus now to kick it away. And this taken in at the goal line. And all deep in his own territory, he coughs up the football. And the Jags grab it. So they take over not only in enemy territory, but in the red zone at the 16-yard line. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. Now Lawrence. And that is incomplete. Oh, the coverage a little too good there, and it's second down. That sure looked like a nice call by the defense, and they're very cohesive in their coverage. As soon as he cut inside, they broke on the football and met him as the ball got there and forced the incompletion. So after the incompletion on first, now second and 10. They'll set up to run the quarterback draw. Lawrence hit and the ball is free. Oh, and one of the linemen on the other side has got it. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. And this is where you need the quarterback to morph into being a running back. The ball can't be away from his body. It can't be loose. It can't be held like he's going to throw it. Tuck it away. Take care of it because he's going to run through a lot of traffic. And if he doesn't take care of it, we're going to see less design runs like that. And the Bills getting set to go. Not an ideal way to end their previous drive. They threw the interception, Charles, after they had built up some momentum. They were moving the football, but something to at least build on for this offense as they run back out here. Yeah, you're right about that. Up until that last play, everything was working pretty well for this offense, gaining chunks of yardage, getting first downs, really making a push for the end zone, and looked like they had a nice rhythm going. Now you got to have a short memory here. Don't focus on the interception. Focus on what came before it and get back to it. So from the 17, here's second and seven. Allen off the play fake. He's got this one complete to Sherfield. Give him a gain of five on the completion. And it makes it third down and two yards to go. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. Now on third and two, they're going to elect to throw with Allen. Able to find the open man. That's complete. Now the Bills are going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. 
Allen. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45. Still a few inches short of a first down as they come up now on second down. Now Allen. Little pitch and catch to the tight end, Knox. Now the Bills will use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with a little over 30 seconds to go in the first half of play. Here's Allen on first and ten. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Cook. And he'll get it down on the play to the 37. And that's good for a pickup of ten yards. And they'll be left with a second and about a foot. And unless this is a quick incompletion, this is likely the last play here of this first half. half will come to an end so we've reached halftime here with the visiting Jaguars out on top as we send you down to Orlando where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports halftime report coach okay Brandon back to you guys in just a moment but welcome everyone to our creative village studios in the EA Sports halftime report in the first half we saw a strong outing from Trevor Lawrence he had a touchdown pass in that first half helping his guys to a halftime advantage. Okay, coach, yeah, adjustments likely going to play a big role in this third quarter in what's been a tight contest so far. The Bills trail here, but they will get the football first as we are back underway on EA Sports. Taken at the goal line. And some good special teams coverage as they bring him down just outside of the 15. Out come the Bills now as he'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. Well, Charles, we saw a pretty entertaining first half, close ball game. Remember there toward the end of the second quarter, the opposition scored to take the lead. Now we'll see if these guys can get a score of their own to regain that lead. Yeah, they want to have that type of a response, don't they? Because they want to find a way to take control of this ball game one more time. Gauntlet's been thrown down. They want to see if they're ready to answer it. After the incomplete pass here now is second and ten. Option play. Here's Cook. And they're going to get him behind the line yet again as his nightmare afternoon continues. It'll go as a loss of a yard, so now they deal with third and 11. And we've seen this a few times in this game. That offensive line just, I don't know if you want to call it out physical, out tough, whatever you want to use. And what people do when that is happening, when they're getting dominated that way, they spread things out a little bit, make it more of a space game, and allow your skill position players to make a few plays out in open field. Take away the physical element, gives you a chance. Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. And so many times we look at the opening drive of the third quarter as a tone setter, and many coaches do emphasize it, and that's a strong performance there defensively to force the incompletion, and more importantly, force a quick punting situation. Here's the punter, Martin, now to kick it away. Agnew now to return. Just a net of 34 there following a punt of 44 yards. And the Jaguars go on offense, first down and 10. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. And they'll throw on first down with Lawrence. A short throw to Ingram. 
It'll go as a gain of four, and that'll bring up second down. It's now second and six at the Bills' 47-yard line. Lawrence. He goes down. That's Gregory Rousseau getting in there to bring him down. This defense coming out after the half, and if that plays any indicator, Charles, maybe a little refreshed and refocused here for quarters three and four. Yeah, they did really well on that one. That's exactly what they need to keep doing if they want to change their fortunes in this game. So now after the sack of Lawrence, the Jags looking at a third and long. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. Complete to Jones. And he's going to be taken down here, still a couple yards short of the first. They do get 12, but they'll be marked short. And that leads to a fourth down. And I believe that that gain on third and long changes things quite a bit because this would be a very long field goal. I wouldn't be surprised to see him go for it here. Here's Logan Cook now as he'll punt it away for the second time. And this one hits at the one, continues on into the end zone for a touchback. And here come the Bills. And our game's hit a little bit of a lull here, a little bit of a snag. Punts on back-to-back -back drives. And old-school coaches don't necessarily mind that. Didn't turn it over, right? Didn't create a big play for the other team. Right now, what you're looking for is can you gain an advantage in field position? And that's what both teams are seeking right now. Yeah, they'll be seeking to gain that advantage here on this drive. After the incompletion, they'll try once more from the 20-yard line on second and 10. To the air, Allen. Got a man in the middle, and it's complete. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Eighth catch for him now. He's been a big factor. And it's a first down. Now flags will come in. One of the Bills got going a little early. Now the offense knew it. They were already starting to walk back as that one is accepted. A false start backs him up five, first and 15. To throw, it's Allen. The left side caught by Diggs. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. The Bills passing game, getting him down the field. They've got another first down. Now a give, running left is Harris. And they go backwards here, losing yardage back at the 48-yard line. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. We knew both of these safeties were good in run support, but how about the play we just saw there? How about that closing speed? Able to get to the outside part of the field and turn that play into a loss. Here's Allen. Getting the football to Davis on an out route. And he's got this down a yard or two shy of the 40 before he's out of bounds. That's good. The completion there for seven yards. And it's third and four now. Here's Allen to throw it. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he's going to have another first down to 
as the tackle's made at the Jaguars' 32-yard line. Give them 10 yards there as this offense is on a roll. This drive continues to plunge forward. That's a pretty good throw on the curl route there. Third down, and they pick up a first. Defense should be aware for that, right? Yeah, they should be aware, but it was so hard sometimes. Yeah, it's not easy. Because when they, when they sell that route really well, you think they're going upfield, then they curl back, show their numbers to the quarterback, and complete the play. They're going to get about three here out of this first down run, and that'll bring up second and seven. From the 29, here's second down and seven. So they fake the handoff. Now Allen throwing quickly there, but it's incomplete. play drive to this point. So here's play number nine on third and seven. Allen going to throw. That's going to be caught. Touchdown, Bills. Gabriel Davis, 29 yards. And the Bills have retaken a third quarter lead. An excellent, long, sustained offensive drive. And now they can look across the field and see a defense that looks a little bit beaten down. Right now, as an offensive coordinator, you're thinking to yourself, can I dial up the knockout punch? And now Sean McDermott's made the call. They'll go for two. Allen will try to throw for it. That's caught. Attempted to fade to the back corner of the end zone unsuccessfully. And I've been with you long enough, Brandon. I know it's not one of your favorite calls. Well, it's interesting. Before working with you, I always viewed that as you're just taking away space and you're trapping yourself in a corner. But you actually have told me they're trying to create space where space is not. Yeah, it's really a, it's a weird deal, isn't it? But you've got to just move that defender inside to create that separation and that little bit of space where there just isn't much. To the touchdown bass to kick it away and they'll bring it out to the 25 as Agnew elects for the touchback and out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go and Charles a very uninspired effort the last time we saw them out there was a quick three and out then they punted the football yeah and you never want to get stopped so soundly during a series but what would be even worse now is letting it happen again right here they've got to get going and he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. Well, I guess we just discovered that someone is certainly not going to sit back and just take it in this game, huh? No, they were trying to get that touchdown back in one shot. One shot, trying to help out his defense and let the other team know they were coming after him. So the incompletion, and now it's second and 10, again from the 25-yard line. Straight ahead, ETN, and he'll be upended at the 28-yard line. Just a three-yard gain there. I have to think a major focus of the halftime mix had to be figured out how to create space for the running game to get operating. Well, what you pointed out to me at half seems accurate. That line has struggled to sustain blocks. Yeah, I would agree with that totally. They've got to focus on staying on their double teams at the first level, make sure that block's secured before they slide off and try and chip someone at the second level. Across the 30 to the 31-yard line. Give them a couple on the run as it brings up the fourth down. Partner, that's another short run there, and I think the easy thing is to look at him right now and say, let's get away from him entirely. Let's start throwing the football, but I don't think you ever entirely abandon the run. It helps set a tone for the game for you, keeps your offensive linemen feeling good about themselves, and it actually tamps down a defense's pressure because if you just throw it all the time, it's going to tee off with the pass rush. A cook now on to punt as he gets this one away. And a fair catch signaled for and taken just outside the 20-yard line. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the Bills will take over the football with a first and 10. Allen and the Bills now with a first and 10 at their own 23. Oh, 
Off the play fake. Allen. A quick throw there is incomplete. The intended target there was Gabriel Davis. And that'll bring up second down. From the gun, it's Allen. Throw right side, caught by Davis. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. Throwing now is Allen. Oh, he tries to force it in, and it's intercepted. Picked up by Andre Cisco, and this one will be returned to right around the 38-yard line. Before we came up to the booth, last thing he said as we were walking off the field, want to play mistake-free football. Well, that just went out the window there with a the pick. And do you remember what you said to me when we were walking up to the booth after he said that? You're like, oh, fatal last words every time we hear that. Things tend to fall apart a little bit, and that's what we saw there. Didn't get enough on that throw, and it turned into an interception. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Running out of the gun with ETN. Down at the 35, it'll be second down. Here's second and seven. Motion man left is Kirk. Here's a fake on the jet sweep, and instead a give up the middle. And a short gain down to about the 33. Well, they were handed great starting field position on this drive, but now they face a third and four. Now Lawrence. He'll get this out to the flat for ETN. So no gain on the play. And that's going to make it fourth down. So much about this game is just understanding situations and then having to execute, isn't it? Guard the first down sticks. Don't let them get there. And they rallied and made the tackle. So Lawrence will exit. And on comes Brandon McManus for the Jaguar field goal. From the right hash and call it an even 50 yards. And that is no good. And this will remain a five-point game. Everything looked good. Good snap, good hold. Sometimes, though, the ball just doesn't want to go where you want it. And this one winds up no good. Buffalo offense back out, ready to go. So now, Charles, this drive, maybe a touch more important, trying to erase the memory of that interception they had the last time out. Yeah, and everyone goes through this because even the best in the game, you're going to have games where it just doesn't go right for you and interceptions result. So, frankly, to me, it's all about how you respond, not just the types of plays that you call, but how you carry yourself, how you show your team that you're still with it, and how you continue to lead. As they began this drive, I was wondering how they were going to attack since they're playing with the lead. Would they continue to try and push the ball downfield? Well, after one play, it appears that the answer is yes. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Oh, they'll certainly be on the tablets going over that one for sure. Clearly, they were expecting something else out of the defense and couldn't adjust to make that completion happen. Third quarter of a tight football game as we come up on a second and ten. Allen now looks to throw. It's complete to Diggs. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Jaguars' 29-yard line. A nice pick up there, 10 yards, and it'll move the sticks. And with that last play, he's now up over that 300-yard mark. And in today's NFL, it almost feels routine. And I hate that when you talk about a 300-yard passing game. To me, 300 yards still signifies excellence, and he's achieved that in this performance. Now he's able to bring through one tackle, but it slowed him down enough that he could only manage getting back to the line of scrimmage. We're in the third quarter in upstate New York with a second and ten. 
Now Allen. And Diggs has it. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. It's a game of matchups, and that's why you take your receivers and move them around a bunch, especially your best guys. And when they work out of the slot, you often hear the coaches talk about how great it is because it gives you a two-way go. You can break out or you can break in. That makes it hard to defend. Allen going to try and throw on third down. That is caught. And he is going to have a Bills first down by a couple of yards as they're able to convert here on third and three. As you know, so many things in the passing game are based on yardage. Sometimes it's just based on timing. And that's what we saw right there on that play. Third and three. Just get the ball right to the receiver. This is the hitch route. And tell us, what is the hitch route? Yeah, just take really one step, like you're driving off the line of scrimmage, get the defensive back on his heels, get the ball out to the receiver, and he does the rest. Now a throw to the end zone on first down, but it winds up incomplete. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Allen. Now he's got it. And the Bills are going to be set up with a first and goal on a pass play that moves them all the way down to the one. I think he has to be saying to himself, how did that not wind up a touchdown? Remember, he just did the tip of the ball across the plane. It's not going to get there, but they're going to be set up in great shape with first and goal. Cook will take this over the line. Touchdown, Buffalo. And certainly some credit there for that touchdown goes to the offensive line. They never get the credit they deserve in the stat sheet, but they are the reason that they got the points. Excellent job up front, clearing the way for the score. Here's Bass now for the extra point. And this one gives his guys a 12-point lead. A good drive that time as they go nine plays in all. And it was James Cook capping all of that off with a touchdown run. to the touchdown Bass to kick it away. And no return here for Agnew, so they'll bring it out, start the drive at the 25. Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive. Last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, get this a time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. Now Lawrence to throw on second down. And he will find Ridley. That's complete. And he's going to be dropped following a pickup of seven past the 30 to the 32. So they'll get a little extra time to come up with his third down play as we played three quarters. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. And this offense on third down today, they've struggled to the tune of two for eight so far. Here it's third and three. A throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Good clean play. No flags coming out of the pocket of the officials. Turns into an incompletion, and that should get him off the field with a three and out. Here's Logan Cook now, as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. The call for a fair catch, and it's made at about the 23-yard line. 
A 41-yard punt there with no return. And out will come the offense as they take over. Allen and the Bills now with a first and 10 at their own 24. Beginning this series with a handoff to Cook. Nowhere to go that time. Might have gotten a yard up to the 25. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. It, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. On second down, here's Allen. He'll get this one complete to Davis. And he's able to get out to the 32, brought down there. Two yards still to go, third down now. They'll run it. Here's Cook. He's not going to get there. That won't even be close. It was blown up in the backfield. Losing two yards that time, and now it's fourth down. They tried to run right into the teeth of the defense on third down, but uh, looked like those teeth were pretty sharp. <laughs> <laughs> they were having absolutely none of it stuffed them for a loss. Yeah, couldn't get any leverage up front and move people aside in order to run the ball. Here's Sam Martin now as he'll kick it away for the second time. First kick, 47. This one looks good as well. On the return, here's Agnew. Found good room to run there. Returns at 14 yards. And they will take over first and 10. Out comes the Jaguar offense now as they get set to take over. Their defense was able to force the punt. That's the good news. But this is still a two-score game, and they need points on this drive and in a relatively quick manner. Yeah, boy, this defense again really making things tough on him as they stop him for no gain. And the trend continues here in the fourth like it was in the first, second, and third. He's had nowhere to run. And you're probably thinking to yourself, why do they keep feeding him the football? Well, they trust him first and foremost. They do believe that over time he might actually pop one of these runs. But bottom line is he takes care of the ball well for them, so they'll keep handing it to him. Meanwhile, Lawrence's throw here into the hands of Jones. Last play, they got stuffed at the line. Different story here, over 20 yards. Good yardage on the completion there. And when they look at the scoreboard, they do understand a field goal is not going to do them any good. My guess, they're going to press the ball downfield as far as possible, try and throw it into the end zone and get a score because they know they've got to get that done and get the ball back as quickly as possible. And maybe a little over pursuit there as he's able to take this down to the 25 yard line. 17 more yards on that one as they keep the drive rolling. Well, they've certainly been successful throwing it around in this game. And that's allowed them to move the ball on offense. But I've got to tell you, to watch them run the football and successfully, I'm not taking sides. But to see the ball in a running back's hands, oh, that's football for me. A short throw there to Strange. They get him to the ground right on the cusp of the red zone after a pickup of five or six. Second and five. A give to ETN running right. And he's only going to get a yard from the 20 to the 19. Third down, here's ETN. And brought down, but not before they get it inside the 10 to the 7. 52 yards rushing for him now as he's carried it 16 times. Those are the types of runs they told us they want to see more of. Look, they'd love the 60 to 70 yard runs, but those 10 to 20 yarders, they can help you win a ball game. And that means everyone's invested because you know the big guys up front. That's what they do. They try and move people. But when you get your perimeter guys involved, Touchdown, Jaguars! Evan Ingram, a 
beast in the red zone with his second touchdown of the game. And the Jaguars have made it a one-score game again here in the fourth. So they get the score still down, but bottom line is they kept themselves in the game. They did keep hope alive, Brandon. That's exactly what they did. Now they've got to deliver and finish things off. Now McManus for the extra point. And this is back to a five-point game. So that drives seven plays in length. And Evan Ingram able to finish it off with a touchdown reception. After the touchdown, here's McManus now to kick it away. On the return, Deontay Hardy. Now Hardy on the return. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. The Bills offense now, they get set to head back on the field. Their lead back down to one score after the touchdown a moment ago. First down's a must on this drive as they start out here first and 10. Here's Cook as they begin on the ground. And he'll take it ahead to the 28-yard line. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. All right, that's a decent game there, but it hasn't been his best game overall. So I wonder what the mindset is of his team. Do they want him to handle the football and try and close this game out? Or are they going to make an alternative plan and maybe go in a different direction? Uh, I think they need him, and this is his time to shine. Now Allen. On the slant, he's got Davis. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. A five-yard pass on the heels of a five-yard run. Good enough for the first. Another tote for the workhorse this afternoon. It's Cook, and he'll be taken down right around the 34 after a pickup of only a yard. They work now on second and nine. To the air, Allen. The left side caught by Diggs. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Jaguars' 43. 23 yards the pick up there. And these guys certainly are not hiding what their intention is. They're absolutely showing it. They're definitely not going to sit on this lead here in the fourth quarter. Couldn't ask for much more to this point in the second half. A gorgeous day. One score game. First and ten here. They'll try the middle with Cook. And he's able to carve out about six there. Down to the 37. Good gain there on first down. It keeps them in a running situation probably. They did everything right on that play, didn't they? They got the leverage up front. Good blocking. Nice hole for him. Ends up picking up nice yardage. Stays in bounds to keep the clock rolling. They are in charge of this scenario right now. They want to stay that way. And not in any rush offensively. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Jaguars' 23. 14 yards, and the Bills will get a new set of downs. This is something you got to be wary of defensively. I mean, just because they're in the mode of trying to burn some clock doesn't mean they won't pass it. They got good yardage out of that one. Yeah, and really, when you're looking at it, now they've got a fresh set of downs. Look for second down. If they want to take another shot and try to loosen things up, that'd be the time to do it. And he fights forward for a modest two-yard gain, second down. Well, any lane that might have been open there was closed pretty quickly, and that was because the defensive front they won that battle at the point of attack at the line of scrimmage. They used great leverage, held their spot, and stacked him up. On second down, Cook. And the second wave of tacklers is going to get him as they stop him behind the line. A yard in the wrong direction makes third down tougher. Third down and nine. That was well played there defensively. Two tight ends in the formation, which essentially gave him seven blockers up front. 
Hard to imagine with all that size and beef that they could let a tackler through, but that's exactly what happened. A loss resulted. Allen off the play fake. Uh, he had a man open, but he missed him, and it's incomplete. So now one of the biggest kicks of the night is forthcoming. This to put him a touchdown and a two-point conversion up. The kick by Bass is good. And the drive will wind up yielding three. But from a defensive perspective, though, I think maybe they're saying, hey, we did what we needed to do, kept this a one-score game. Yeah, without a doubt, because they were able to bleed some time off the clock, right? Put themselves in a good position, but it's not out of reach yet, okay? Being able to hold them to a field goal means that they do have a chance to come back and win this game. So after knocking through the field goal, here's Bass to kick it away. And they'll bring it out to the 25 as Agnew elects for the touchback. Out comes Zay Jones with the rest of his offense as they take the field. Let's see here, Charles. Six catches, over 100 yards. Call that a pretty good day at the office. And I love the accumulation. The catches, the yardage. That means he's having a pretty good impact on this ball game and really helping his team out a big way. Means he wants the football again, right? And it's funny because some of these receivers are very vocal about how much they're getting it. Others are quieter, but they still let you know, give me the ball, I'm going to make a play. First play of the drive in their hip pocket. Of course, the focus here has to be the touchdown of the two-point conversion. Field goals aren't going to help you. Yeah, but how about that first play of the drive? Just to get them started, nice game, get some positive momentum going. They're on their way, and they don't have to rush. And he'll be taken down across the 50 at the 45 in enemy territory. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes, and we've got a one-score game. So it's Jaguar football here as we welcome you back. They come up on a first and 10, desperately needing a score here on what could be their final drive. Lawrence's throw into the hands of Kirk. And he's going to get this down near the 30-yard line. That's a nice job right there, partner, because they were able to work down the middle of the field, working in the seams, because I think defensively, they were guarding the sidelines, trying to keep them from getting out of bounds. They took what they gave them, and it was successful. Plenty of time. All three timeouts still were made. Here's first and ten now. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Ooh, that's certainly not the worst thing. It stops the clock and lets your offense catch its breath and lets us exhale a little bit. Now I expect them to call a couple plays in the huddle, so they're ready if a tackle happens inbounds. They'll try again here. Second and ten. Back to throw, Lawrence. They'll try and set up the screen to ETN. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. And when you have success throwing the football, the old cliche becomes true. The playbook opens up wide. And these screen passes, they become even more difficult to stop. Here's first down. Here's Lawrence. That's going to be complete on the sideline, but, you know, that throw left him no room to run, and the good footwork nearly all for not. I just make this one simple. Could he be any more open than he was on that play? Yeah, they lost him going to the outside. Hard to believe because you go through your accounting on each and every defensive snap. Who's got who? What, what defense you're in? That was totally a blown coverage. So in the final minute here, now a two-point conversion will tie the game. The touchdown's massive, but now they've got to have two to possibly take this to overtime. So here we go now as the Jaguars will go for two. Now they'll try and set up the quarterback draw here. 
And he's not going to get there. The defense able to come up with a big stop, and they're going to hold on to their two-point lead. And the failure to convert and tie the game, now the pressure shifts back to the defense. But I think it was the right play. I think it was the right call to try and tie the game there. Kick an extra point, you're still down one. What's the sense? I, I like what they did. So with exactly a minute to play, here comes a critical onside kick. Oh, did the Jags get this? Yes, Jags football. They'll come up first and 10 here. Lawrence. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. Inside a minute to go. Here's second and ten now. Throwing now, Lawrence. Man open here is Jones. He takes it across for the touchdown, and they've taken the lead late in the final minute of the fourth. Wow, wow. What a game this has been, and what a drive that was, Charles, to take the lead here late in the fourth quarter. And partner, that's a job well done by everyone, from the players to the guys calling the plays. And if I may introduce just one downside to the mix, might be a little bit too much time left. Enough on the clock for a final last ditch effort to try and steal this win away. Now McManus to tack on the extra point. And the lead is up to five. The long touchdown pass gets him six on a very, very tidy two-play drive that time. After the touchdown, here's McManus now to kick it away. This fielded right at the goal line. Running room at the 50. Look out. He might score. And he's going to take it all the way into the end zone. What a return. And they've taken the They had just lost the lead. That deficit sure didn't take long to erase. They return the ensuing kickoff for a touchdown. Love the thunderbolt that just came out of that one. That puts them in the end zone and back in the lead. Your only question, your defense just gave up a score and it puts you behind. Well, that score you just added on the board will it energize them? Or do they have to go back out there and they're a tired unit? We'll soon see. And he'll get into the end zone. So now a field goal would only tie as they up their lead to three. Well, we talk a lot about explosive plays on offense. How about an explosive play on special teams? Certainly one there on the kick return for a touchdown. So now the other return teams out there as they'll try to duplicate what they just saw. Yeah. 
And he'll get it up just past the 20 as his guys will go to work at the 21-yard line. So here now, Lawrence and the Jaguars down by a field goal, 36 seconds remaining. How will this thing pan out? We'll watch as they come up on first down. Back to throw. And oh, that one nearly intercepted. That would have sealed it. Instead, it'll be second down. The way he's throwing the football today, almost a surprise when he doesn't complete a pass <laughs> like happened there, but he needs a few more to get his guys downfield. Well, the way he's throwing it leads him to believe that he's going to get those completions. That means the guys going out for passes, they'll run even harder because they expect it as well. And that's complete ETN out of the backfield. And he'll be out of bounds after a gain of about five. That stops the clock, but slow and steady won't win the race at this point. This Buffalo crowd letting him have it. Third down now. Back to throw. Able to find Jones. On the move past the 40. Still going inside the 20. And he's across for the touchdown. And it's likely the game winner here in the closing stages. What an outstanding drive right there to take the lead. And also, Charles didn't leave their opposition with a whole lot of time on the clock. Yeah, I like the way that you're viewing this because they did a tremendous job to put themselves in a position to win. But they can't celebrate just yet. They've got to clamp down on any big plays and force them to use up those timeouts without making any headway. McManus now for the extra point. And it would appear they're going to get out of here with a come-from-behind victory. So the drive there, they went 80 yards in three plays. And it culminates in a Jags touchdown. After the touchdown, here's McManus now to kick it away. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped at the 23-yard line. Buffalo offense ready to go for their next drive. And last time able to get three. It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. Just, I, I like the way you've described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. Allen. And that is incomplete. Seven seconds remaining. I like the calmness of how he played the ball here. No panic in his eyes as that throw arrived. Tracked it from the moment it left the quarterback's hand, and that's just where he needed to be to knock it away. This definitely four-down territory at this point, but a critical third down here to throw is Allen. And Allen will have the first down as he's able to slide to avoid the contact at the end. Well, it took us until the final play, Charles, to officially decide a winner, although on that last play they were so backed up it would have taken a miracle and they couldn't get that miracle done. Well, I like how you stayed with it because we both knew that this had to go down to the last play and neither side was going to exhale until that play concluded because we've seen the improbable before. A couple of laterals, maybe some poor defense on the back end. They might have gone all the way to the end zone. In this case, though, it didn't happen. Perhaps next time.